Welcome to our Africa Tech segment. Now, without research, where would we be? There would be almost nothing to use as a guide for various studies or projects. For that reason, the importance of research cannot be overemphasized, as it is an essential component in the development of what we call the knowledge-based society. Research and development is one of the means by which businesses could experience future growth by developing new products or processes to improve and expand their operations. Joining me to do justice to the tech subject is Mr. Iso Basi. He is the founder and CEO of Academics Nigeria. Mr. Basi, thank you very much for joining us. It's a pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure indeed to have you. Now, um, we understand that um, Academics Nigeria is working towards aggregating Nigerian-focused research from multiple disciplines and also putting them online to meet a global demand. My question is, how well are you doing as regards that aim? Sorry, I didn't get your question. How, I'm how talking well are we? I'm asking, from what I gather, I understand that your company is working towards aggregating Nigerian-focused research, you know, from multiple disciplines and putting them online to meet a global demand. And I'm asking how much progress you've made concerning that. Uh, okay, well, um, I mean, this is a project we've been working on since the beginning of the year, actually. And um, we launched the website on the 1st of September, and um, you know, so far we've partnered with you know quite a number of uh, organizations, and we continue to um, create more partnerships daily. Um, so at the moment, we've got uh, I think we've got close to two thousand research papers on the site at the moment. And then, like you pointed out, the papers there cut across multiple disciplines, and you know the idea being that anyone who's looking for anything. Um, about Nigeria, any research that pertains to Nigeria I should be able to find it on one platform. So we've made progress since the 1st of uh, September when we launched, and there's been a lot of work since the beginning of the year. Now, why is it research that sparked your interest? Of all the other platforms that you could have created, what, how relevant you know, is research to national development, basically? Well, I think it's extremely um, important. The idea for academics came uh, sometime in 2012. Uh, then I was actually, I'm based in Calabar, and um, you know, there were a lot of things happening in the States. Uh, you're probably aware that General Electric uh, well, has come into Washington State. And at the time, we were looking to facilitate a real estate development. And um, you know, I felt that it was important to be able to convince uh, potential investors that um, it was viable and that, um, you know, we, we basically needed to look at how the property market had performed in Calabar. We needed to be able to tell that story to convince an investor to put funds into the project. And um, we realized that it was very difficult to come about that, that kind of information. And uh, someone told us about, you know, someone who had the information or had something that, you know, perhaps would have been relevant to, uh, to our project. And, um, you know, the person just wasn't really willing to part with the with the knowledge and i you know at that point i just thought to myself that it would be very important if uh, if there was a platform where you know research about nigeria would just be on there and anyone who's interested could, uh, could log on and access it and i think that this is particularly important in nigeria at the moment because i mean as you are aware nigeria is, uh, is the largest um, economy in africa uh what that suggests is that there's going to be a lot of uh, foreign direct investment coming in. Uh, people out there are going to be very interested in knowing what opportunities they are. And I don't think there's any investor who's going to come in and put money without, uh, without knowledge to back up, you know, uh, decisions. Well, I must say congratulations for noticing that gap as regards research being, uh, you know, inaccessible online and actually you know, filling it or, you know, I'm looking for the right words at this point, but I think you've identified the problem and you're on your way to solving it. Thank you so much for joining us on Network Africa, Mr. Iso Basi. It's a pleasure. Thank you.
And we've listened to all that our guests had to say. And now it's time to listen to what our viewers have to say. Yesterday, we asked you about what your thoughts were concerning the release of the Al Jazeera journalists. And here, are, here is the top feedback of the day. The first is coming from Blessing Ada. And she says, delay defects equity and why did it take them this long well i have no idea but thank you for sharing that thought with us the second is coming from wale Duroja, and he says i'm very glad that the journalists eventually got the presidential pardon from president sisi of egypt my joy is that objective journalism is embraced and that justice prevailed notwithstanding the time lapse in between the period they had been detained in egypt and i also prevail on the egyptian government to release the last journalist who is still in custody. I think you have your facts mixed up there, Wale, because in truth, Peter Gresta is back in Australia, but the, he has not received that presidential pardon. Either way, thank you so much for your feedback, and please keep them coming. On that note, here's our question of the day regarding our topic for the last Friday of the month special. How can domestic violence be stopped? Feel free to send us your feedback either via email or Twitter. The address and handle are right there on your screen. As always, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for watching Network Africa on Channels Television. I'm Cynthia Arendt.